131 billion dollars Jeff Bezos 318 billion Rockefeller in today's day and age net worth is one of the most important things according to every single guru out there but in reality it's not that important and that's why in this video I'm actually gonna break down three reasons why net worth is actually overrated and you shouldn't be really paying attention to it as much as people actually do tell you. So stick around to the end of this video so you can actually find out exactly how net worth is calculated, how it works, and on top of that, three reasons why it's actually overrated. Now, if you don't know me guys, my name is Ty Bryson, I'm an accountant, and I've been doing this for a while now, okay? And on top of that, I upload videos on YouTube every single day, so make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. And while you're at it, hit the like button because it helps the channel out a ton, so I appreciate that favor. And I actually wanna ask you guys one question. Do you know your net worth right now? Comment down below. Do you know your net worth? Yes or no? Or even comment down below. What is your net worth? That's pretty interesting. I'm really curious to see like how much people go beyond that hundred thousand dollar net worth. So now that you commented, I want to jump into exactly what a liability is, what an asset is, what net worth is, and how do I actually interpret it? And what's my definition? Because everyone out there has their own definition. Well, you know, there's a definition for accountants, which is basically like, Hey, liabilities minus assets give you the net worth. And that's fine. Completely fine by the way. But in reality, here's what I want to say. That's not how I defined it and here's why because you can't really gain anything from that valuation while well, here's how I defined it. It's um, liabilities take money away from you, assets put money into your pocket. You might say, Tommy, that sounds very familiar to Rich Dad Poor Dad and the answer is yes. It is, that's where I actually got it from. And I actually wanna share with you guys some examples because it's not as simple as you actually think it is. So for example, my YouTube camera, is it a liability or is it an asset? Now, that's a pretty easy one because you guys already know, assets put money in your pocket, liabilities take money out, or they can be investments, right? And here's my thing, my camera for YouTube, obviously it's an asset because it's an investment and it does put money in my pocket because I use this device, this camera, whatever it is, I use it to make videos, to film stuff, and those things make me money. So that's an asset because it's putting money into my pocket. Now, here's a more difficult one, okay? My credit card. Is it an asset or is it a liability? And comment down below before I answer. You probably cheated already, you haven't commented, and just hear my answer, and then you'll comment after. But here's the answer either way, okay? My credit cards are then an asset or a liability. The answer is both. Don't ever think that anything in the world is just like either or. That's not how the world is. It's not black and white. It's obvious that there's always different iterations of everything. So for example, my credit cards. Here's how it's gonna be an asset, here's how it's gonna be a liability. So for example, if I use my credit card to buy an iPhone X or buy a Rolex or whatever I wanna buy, things that I can't afford usually, and I buy it, and now I'm gonna to have to carry a balance for the next five to 10 years because I want it to look fancy with the newest Rolex, the newest Apple Watch, but by the time I pay it off, there's already been like 10 Apple Watches and I can't afford another one because I can't afford these minimum payments. So for example, in that situation, what is it doing? It's taking money away from your pocket, so in reality, it's a liability because again, liabilities take money away from your pocket. But Tommy, Credit cards always take money away from your pocket because they always have interest. And I'm not talking about any promotions, okay? I'm not talking about that at all. But here's my thing. There's certain situations where it can be an asset and here's how. Because it's called capital injection. So for example, if I want to create a business and I don't have any money in my pocket, no money at all, I don't have rich parents, I don't have anything, and I want to create my business but I have a credit card with a $1,000, $500 credit limit, like whatever it is, doesn't really matter. And I have this credit card and I take it I spend money on products to actually sell, is that an asset or a liability? Even though I have to carry a balance and actually pay off that credit card interest. Is that an asset or a liability? Comment down below. Here's why it's so complicated. Because in reality, if what you just bought with that credit card is gonna make you enough money in profits to actually offset the interest rate, then it is an asset. Here's what I mean by this, very simple. If you're literally making $10 profit every single day when you're selling one of your products and your interest rate is only like maybe $5 a month, then right then and there, you just made a profit. Your profit is $5. And then the credit card would be an asset because in reality, it was your only method to actually achieve what you wanted, which was to start your own business and actually start the ball rolling. And I actually did that a bunch of times. So your credit card can actually be an asset. Now, the third example, again, is real estate an asset or a liability? And you might say, Tommy, very easy, asset. The answer is no. More than often, real estate is actually a liability. Here's why. Because more than often, people that do buy real estate, they're buying it for personal use. Now, what this means is this. If my mom or me, for example, I decide to buy a property 
for my personal use and I'm gonna get a 30 year mortgage and I'm gonna be making payments on this property of $3,000, $1,000, $2,000 every single month. And you might say, Tommy, shut up, okay? Because when you pay rent, it's the same thing, but you don't get to own anything. So real estate is obviously a better option. The answer is not really, and here's why. In this case, real estate is a liability because it's taking money away from my pocket and has not returned anything back to me. But Tommy, it's building its value. You're gonna have liquidity, you're gonna have all this stuff, you're gonna have finances. The answer is, I don't care. It's still a liability because imagine this. You bought this house for, for personal use, right? And it's been 30 years, and now you finally paid it off. Now it's your asset, right? Because now it's gonna put money back in your pocket because you might be renting now. You're gonna move out, you're gonna sell it back and the value went up tremendously. Well, yeah, but for the past 30 years, you've been paying a mortgage that you literally can't afford or you've been paying it religiously. But guess what? Imagine how much more money you could have made if you had turned that liability into an asset. Tommy, what are you talking about? If you had literally rented that piece of real estate, right? If you had rented it, the top, or the, the, or, the, or the third floor and you live on the bottom, you have the tenants cover everything and then now, guess what? You're not paying for the property, the tenants are, well now it's an asset because at the end of the month, they pay for everything plus you get a little cash in your pocket because it covers everything and more. And that's how you turn a liability into an asset. So don't just think that everything is black and white guys. I've seen countless people out there on YouTube tell you, hey, buy real estate. The best time to buy real estate is right now. In reality, no, no, don't do that at all. Make sure you're going to be making money from it. Making money is the most important thing when it comes to deciding if you're going to invest into an asset or a liability. And here's a trick. A lot of liabilities are disguised as assets and people out there that are trying to sell you things might say, Hey, 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 this is a very good asset because in the future you will be making money from it. Well, what about now? Okay. What about now today? How much money are you going to make from it? And usually it's zero. So think about that before you actually pull the trigger. So comment down below guys right now and let me know, does that make sense? Do you guys agree with me? Do you think assets should put money into your pocket or take money away? Do you think it even matters? Do you think a house is a liability? Let me know in the comments down below. What do you think about my definition? Does it make sense or does it not make sense? Comment down below before I give you guys three tips on how to actually manage your entire net worth and why it's actually overrated. The first thing I want to talk about guys is net worth is actually overrated. Now here's why. I know a ton of people out there that tell me, Tommy, you know, you have to get a positive net worth, but society, and I'm telling you this, it's not other people, society is kind of set up so you start off with a negative net worth. What I mean is this, okay? When you graduate from high school, you probably don't have a job. More than often, people don't have jobs when they graduate from high school, and now they're in college accumulating student loan debt, and they often don't have loans, and they can't cover all the prices and all the costs of college, so by the time you graduate from college, you're already starting out life on a negative net worth. Now, what does this mean? Does it mean that you're screwed? Does it mean that you're F? What does this mean, right? Here's my thing. It doesn't mean any of that stuff. And I'm gonna tell you guys a short story right now. In my college days, by the way, I was in college when I was 17 years old, and I instantly started working as soon as I got there. And I managed to save around a little bit over $10,000. So theoretically, I could have graduated with zero student loan debt because I could have paid everything because I only owed around Ten to thirteen thousand dollars in student loan debt, which on average is very good, right? Because the average is like thirty-seven thousand. But here's my thing: I said, well, if I take this money and I pay my student loan debt, yes, my net worth will be positive, but I won't have the opportunity to actually start my own business. And at this time, I want to start a YouTube business. I want to start a lot of businesses out there, and I actually started them. And here's my thing, guys. I actually graduated, instead of with $10,000 in student loan debt, I actually graduated with over $21,000 in student loan debt. You might say, Tommy, how do you do that? Doesn't make any sense. The answer is this. I took a loan from my school, like a student loan, like whatever loan it is, right? I took that loan for $7,000. If the math doesn't add up, don't worry about it. It's because it's a little bit more over, okay? And here's my thing. I took $7,000 and then when I plus my $10,000, I put them together. That was $17,000, like a little bit over, you know? And I took that money and I invested in it. I flipped it. I made a ton of money from it. And if it wasn't for that one investment, I wouldn't be here right now. And guess what? My net worth was negative for like the past three to four years. And if I had worried about, hey, oh my gosh, my net worth is, wor is like messed up. I just want to like spend my money on this. The answer is I would have screwed up. I would have never gotten here because guess what? Net worth is overrated because it's just a number. It all depends what's going into that number. If it says like, hey, you know, he has this debt. Yes, but he's making a ton of money over here. 
That's what's really important. Number two, how do you grow your net worth? And this is a very simple answer, but it's very complex because you might think, well, Tommy, the way to actually grow your net worth is by acquiring more and more assets, right? Makes sense. And then lowering your liabilities, right? Sounds good. But in reality, no, that's not how I would do it. And it doesn't make sense. By the way, guys, remember, I'm an accountant, so I know what I'm talking about. I'm not making any of this stuff up. Usually when you read a book, they tell you like, hey, there's good debt, bad debt, just stay away from all debt whatsoever and just like focus on building assets. That's great. But that's a very long path. And here's why. Because more than often, it's going to take you a very long time because your job doesn't pay you enough money. So here's my thing. How do you grow your net worth? And the answer is focus on making more money and acquiring more assets at the same time. But this does not mean just focus on big spending to get assets that pay you minimal, 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 minimal returns. So for example, if you invest into real estate, we all know this, by the way, on average, you're going to get between 0.5% to 1% on the value of the property in rent every single month. Now it's a very slow return because on average, you're only getting back like maybe 7%. And after all the cost it has to do with the entire property, it might only be between like three to 5% or something like that. Okay. The stock market, same thing, 7%, 10%. But if you actually focus on growing your streams of income by flipping properties or like by buying, well, not pro, I don't, I don't really flip properties. It's a very different thing. But by flipping your money and making more money, like starting e-commerce websites, like focus on things that make your money grow expeditiously. Because the only way to actually do that is by actually starting a business. And guess, guess what, guys? Safe investments like the stock market. Well, that's not even safe, okay? But if you invest in the SP 500, which is pretty much safe, you know. That's going to take you a long time to grow your money. Same thing with real estate, same thing with all those things. But the only investment that can actually grow your money expeditiously is by selling things and selling products and starting a business. Imagine this. I make around 53% of my money every single year. And that's a very low estimate. On average, I double my money, triple my money every single year. And sorry about that. And every single year. So it's been doubling. And if I had put my money in the stock market, it would have never worked. If I put my money anywhere else but into my businesses, it would have never worked. Number three. How do I set goals to actually increase my net worth? Remember in the beginning when I told you guys Jeff Bezos, 139 billion, um, Rockefeller, 318 billion. Here's the thing, guys. When those people first started out, they weren't focusing on <laughs> their net worth per se. They were actually focusing on a product, on a business, expanding it and growing it to its full potential. And guess what? When you focus on this, your net worth is bound to grow because you're going to make more money. You're going to provide more value to more people out there and you will keep growing immensely. But you might say, Tommy, that's not really my goal. I don't want to own a business. I don't want to do that. That's too much work. Like businesses fail. I get that. I get that a lot. Okay. I understand. But if you want to, if you don't want to do that, there's a way to do it. Okay. You go the slow way. You get that job that's 60 K a year, 80 K a hundred K, whatever it is. And you start working from there. You start buying assets building businesses, side jobs, side hustles, you know, and that's how you get started. But you have to, here's my thing. If you're not willing to sacrifice anything, you won't achieve anything. And when you talk about Jeff Bezos, when you talk about Rockefeller, when you talk about Bill Gates, Warren, all these people made immense sacrifices, but it was never about net worth. It was about providing more value, making more money. And by the way, guys, I love money, but I only like it because it shows me my progress. I don't love money itself, but I do love what it does for me, which is provide freedom for me. So just make sure you're not following the money, but you're following the thing that's going to make you the money. Okay. Because money isn't going to come. And when I first started this business on YouTube, by the way, it's been four years I've been on here and the first three years I didn't make any money whatsoever. So imagine if I was after money, I would have never done this at all because you literally make no money for the first three years. Okay. So just think about that. So comment down below and let me know, what do you think about my three golden rules to net worth? Do you agree with me? Do you not agree with me? Do you think that the net worth is the most important thing ever? Comment down below and let me know. So if you're wondering about my final thoughts and you're wondering, Tommy, okay, so what's your overall thought of this? The answer is net worth is important, but it can be overrated for some people out there because they choose not to take action because they don't want to go into the negative mark and they want to stay in the green. The answer is this, unless you're working at IBM and making maybe $150,000 a year, you won't ever make it to where you want to make it. Okay. Here's the thing on average, if you're not a millionaire, it's going to take you a very long time to actually acquire big immense wealth for me also. And here's my thing. The only way to actually get there is by borrowing money and making very good investments and being very smart about what you do or starting a business or anything like that. And for me guys, that's what I did. I took risks, but I took calculated risks because I knew what I was getting into. So my recommendation is this net worth is important. 
but it doesn't matter as long as you're focusing on good debt and good assets on making more money and you're not focusing on buying a Rolex, buying a Gucci belt, like buying things that you don't need. That's what's important. Guys, as always, comment down below and let me know in the comments down below. Do you agree with me? Do you not agree with me? Are you going to start tracking your net worth? By the way, I track my net worth every single week. So don't think that I don't pay attention to this stuff because it's very important also. So comment down below. Let me know. Are you going to start tracking your net worth or not? And as always, guys, thank you for watching the video. If you liked it, leave a big thumbs up. It helps the channel out a lot, a ton. And I really appreciate when you guys do like the videos because it keeps the channel growing and growing and growing. As always, if you want to see me and you want to keep watching these videos, subscribe and also turn on notifications. You get notified every single time I upload a video. And if you want to talk to me one on one, Uno a uno, just DM me on Instagram at Tommy Bryson. I reply to all my DMs 100% of the time. Ask anyone on the channel, okay? I reply. I'm always there because I know sometimes you guys want to ask me a question, but you don't want to comment in that below because it's kind of private. So just DM me there, fully private, and I can answer you there. And if you want to support the channel and you got some cash on you, buy one of these t-shirts. I have them on the tag, and I also have them in the description down below. I'll see you guys next time on this video. Thanks for watching, and peace.